I'm standing in the 16th century gallery of the Wallace Collection, a treasure trove stuffed with masterworks of the Baroque and the Renaissance periods. Now, pop musicians haven't often drawn inspiration from the world of high art, but there's one notable exception to that, as I found out when I met up with Florence Welsh of Florence and the Machine at the National Gallery. There aren't many pop stars to be found walking the corridors of the National Gallery in the dead of night. But Florence Welsh is the kind of pop star we haven't seen for a while. Her music brings the great themes of the Renaissance into the 21st century. Love, death, sex, and of course, God. It's high church indie rock, lush, with organs blasting and a big dose of drama. Aptly given her Italian at name, I've come to meet Florence in the Renaissance galleries to find out a bit more about the art that inspires her. Is going to galleries something you do? Is it something that's a kind of respite from the madness of being on tour? It is actually. It's, um, it's something we try and do in almost every city we go to. I think just the sense of being outside yourself. I've always liked the atmosphere of galleries. I think some people might think it's an unusual preoccupation for someone in the modern music business to be interested in, 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 in Renaissance art. But then when I'm in this gallery, and you know, all these pictures are about emotion, aren't they? Hopeless love, mm. compassion, the desire to fly. In fact, those are, you know, in a sense, some of your songs Certainly. are about those sorts of things, aren't they? <laughs> yes, there's, there's a lot of drama going on in this room. And um, an amazing wallpaper as well. It's, my outfit seems to be going... <laughs> You've well, come dressed, you come dressed come. as National Gallery <laughs> wallpaper. So what kind of things do you look for when you look, when you look at a painting? What did you gravitate towards? I guess I'm always attracted to paintings like with, with drama in them. And passion. I mean, I like this one a lot. She looks very serene, which I think in a lot of the Renaissance paintings of of martyrs, they, they do, because it's about that sense of transcendence, of leaving the pain in your body and you know, the spirit going somewhere better. I, quite like, I like the physicality of this one. I think I've, I've definitely pulled that pose in a few photo shoots before. <laughs> <laughs> definitely have. <laughs> I've seen that one. I imagine this might be a picture that I would have thought might appeal to you because it's, it's doing a lot of things in a way that your music does. At first, it's very, very beautiful, but the more that you look, the more disturbing it becomes. It's quite manic and it is quite disturbing. I, I, the way I saw it was it was, a, it was a canvas for love, and then that's, I think that's like syphilis. It is, yeah. yeah well, it's technically it's jealousy. But we now think that, that, that syphilis might be, might be intended as well, because he's got the symptoms of tertiary syphilis, like the rotting teeth. And then this creature, a kind of a strange, sort of half sphinxy. she seems to be holding a cake. She's, holding, <laughs> she's actually holding a honeycomb. Yeah. And she's, she is looks, that, she is looks that like funny? a... No, she's pleasure. Pleasure. And she looks like an innocent, sweet little girl but holding the honey, but actually she's got she's a got sting a in the tail. tail. So if you go the route of pleasure, as Cupid and his mother are somewhat incestuously doing, then syphilis might be the consequence. And it's a strange picture because this was given by the Medici, painted by Bronzino, but given to the King of France, Francis I, who was a famously lubricious monarch. And in Italy, syphilis, or the clap, it was known as the French disease. So some people think it was a sort of gift. <laughs> Which, which itself had a bit of a sting in the tail. It yeah. was a gift, but it had a bit of an insult against the French built into it. I don't know if that's true. I'm always attracted to the big things because I feel like they last. And, you know, sex, time, death, violence. There's never going to be, like, an updated version of death, is there? You can't get, like, the new death or the new <laughs> updated version of love or pain. They're eternal, and you, we felt we kind of... Well, I think we're always trying to find ways of not feeling them, but I think they, they keep cropping up. Yeah, well, so what we've done transcendence and we've done sex, do you think we should go and find some other great themes? Time for death, I think. So 
What a profoundly morbid picture we've decided to end on. The death of Acteon by Titian. There's a bit of lust involved as well, because the hunter Acteon surprised Diana when she was bathing, and she took revenge by turning him into a stag, and he was killed by his own hounds. Um, he's, he's painted her so much larger, hasn't he, than, than poor little Acteon. She's sort of rebuffing his advances in a really in a most extreme way by turning that, that sort of emblems of his masculinity against him. It feels to me like a very personal picture. Do you, think, do you think he was re rebuffed? I don't do know. Think... I mean, I think it's partly Titian painting the fading memory of every beautiful woman he's ever seen and painted, but I also think he's painting... Knocking him down? Him, well, as a memory, or he knows he's not up to it anymore, he knows he's on the way out. It's a picture about encroaching death, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's a picture that almost feels like autumn. It's so unlike the other yeah. pictures we looked at. You know, there's no sort of glowing marble-like flesh, and the colours are all quite rusty and, um, yeah, autum autumnal. And, they, you know, and there's no bright blues, and even the, the folds of the fabric seem to be sort of merging together. And it's much more painterly, I think. It's fantastically ambiguous. He almost wants still wants her, even though she's killing him. Maybe you should write a song about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, I've de I definitely, I think I have written a song about still wanting them, even. That's it, I love you so much, I'm going to let you kill me. I think that was the line that... It, so you already wrote the song, basically. I've already okay. written the song. I've really enjoyed but it. But I didn't, um... I didn't, that was, that's a line from a poem I used in this, but the song was there. I think the song should swell up <laughs> as, as we leave, right?